everybody, MS Farzan here, and welcome back to this video series on building a multiplayer card game using Phaser 3, Express, and Socket.io. We're going to start working on our interactivity here, and uh, pretty much get very close to having a working version of the game. And so what we're going to do uh, is just set up, uh, set the stage for a few things that we're going to need in our game. We'll start in the game handler uh, um, helper. And here within the constructor, which is going to need to take a scene, we're going to create a, a few uh, variables that will help us with the flow for our game, and which is where your game logic could live. We're going to start with saying this dot game state equals initializing. This is before anything happens. We're just saying that the game is initializing, and then we're going to say this is my turn equals false, meaning the client that uh, is running the game, we're going to say it's not their turn just yet until told otherwise. This.playerDeck equals uh, nothing, just an empty array. This.opponentDeck is an empty array. This.playerHand, the hand in the uh, cards in a player's hand and this dot opponent hand is also empty if you have like yards or like a um, discard pile you could do that as well and then we'll need uh, a way to be able to change turns between players we'll say this dot change turn is a function where this dot is my turn is the opposite of that. And just for to help us out, we'll say console.log is my turn plus this dot is my turn. And uh, that's that. And we also want a way to change the game state locally, so or change the local game state, I should say. We'll say this dot change game state equals game state. This dot game state equals whatever the game state is. And let's console log to the console game state. plus this dot game state. For just kind of like hiding the, the game state a little bit so that we don't um, uh, mutate it directly. We're you know using a function that is accessed from outside this class. Um, that's basically all we need for our very basic game handler here. If you have a game a need for uh, more complex game logic or you know for turns to, to um, rotate in a different way or whatever, this is a good place to do that. Okay, and now um, let's go into our, um, um, hmm, how do we want to do this? I'm tempted to, to actually have us work with our, um, yeah, let's, let's, let's build out our interactive handler, although we, we're not able to do much with it just yet. We'll just build this out really quick and then um, it will be, become useful when we need it. So within the uh, interactive handler, we just have this empty shell here. We're going to pass in a scene. And we're going to say scene.dealcards.on. Remember, we have that deal cards text. Uh, that's what we're referring to now. We're saying on pointer down. And now we're availing some of the, the um, phaser functionality here. Well, that's a function. And if we use a um, uh, an arrow function like this, we can preserve the um, context of this, so we don't have to save this elsewhere like we did in, a, in our um, the original version of this series. We're going to say scene dot socket dot emit deal cards, comma scene dot socket dot id. Now, what does this mean? Why, why do we 
have to do any of this right now. We haven't even talked about socket IO. We will in just a moment. Let's just hang on to this for a moment. And then scene.dealcards.disable interactive. So in this case, what we're saying is that when uh, a client clicks on this deal cards button, when, when it's hopefully interactive at some point, it should send a message to the server using socket IO, which we haven't discussed yet, I know, to, uh, to deal cards. And then it should disable this deal cards uh, button so that you know they shouldn't be able to just keep dealing cards until we say so. What else? Scene.dealcards.on pointer over scene.dealcards.set color. And so when the mouse goes over it, let's set it to hash FF69B4. Okay, we've done that, it reloads for us. And uh, we haven't set it interactive, so we, we're not able to do anything with it yet. And then scene.dealcards.on pointer out, comma, it's function scene.dealcards.setColor hash oops, I need a 00FFFF. So basically we're just adding a little interactivity to say that when we um, when uh, a mouse goes over the, the deal cards button it should change color. And um, yeah, I think our, our uh, well, we'll get there. Um, I, I'm just recalling where that lives and it's going to be in our socket handler where we um, tell the, the, the deal cards to be um, become active. Okay, good. There's some other stuff uh, that we'll deal with later in terms of like how, um, like if we want to zoom in on cards and that sort of thing. So we won't do that just right now. What we are going to do is we're going to set our interactivity for our cards, which uh, if you if we were just to render them on the screen, we wouldn't necessarily be, be able to drag and drop them. So we're going to say scene.input.on drag start. And then we have to enter in as parameters pointer and game object. Game object dot set tint, and we're going to put in zero x ff six nine b four. I'll explain what we're doing in just a moment. Scene dot children dot bring to top game object, and scene dot. Uh, well, we won't deal with this just yet. Well, that's a, a, a different part. So this is just this is using just basic fun, uh, phaser functionality that when a drag start ha event happens, when you start dragging something, um, it uses the game object so that we could say whatever is being dragged, set the tint to this color. Um, and then um, of all the children in the scene, bring it, bring the game object to the top, meaning make it the closest thing to my face so it's not dragging under other objects in the scene. And then scene dot input dot on drag end. We have to pass in a pointer, game object, and uh, dropped game object dot set tint to nothing. Just remove the tint that we've been putting on it when it was when it was dragged. And we say if it's not dropped in a drop zone. Then game object dot x is equal to game object dot input dot drag start x and game object dot y equals game object 
dot input dot drag start y. It's a long way of saying to phaser at the end of a drag event set the tint to, to nothing and then if it's not dropped in a drop zone just send it back to where it started. And finally scene dot input dot on drop when the card is dropped or game object is dropped and we'll say pointer game object drop zone that'll come in handy if scene dot game handler dot is my turn and oops and and scene dot game handler dot game state is all equal to ready we haven't seen that game state yet game object dot x equals drop zone dot x and game object dot y equals drop zone dot y and then scene dot input dot set draggable game object false so so far we're just saying that if it's my um, basically we're thinking that there's cards on the screen I'm gonna try and drag them and I can drag them all I want but I can't drop them in the drop zone unless it's my turn and the game state is ready which we haven't seen yet we haven't encountered that yet but if that happens set it to the same X and Y coordinates as the drop zone and make it so that I can't drag the drop drag the card anymore once I've dropped a card uh, that's it at the bottom of this we're gonna say scene dot socket dot emit card played comma game object dot data dot values dot name scene dot socket dot id we'll begin the next um, the next uh, video talking about uh, exactly about what this is otherwise or else game object dot x equals game object dot input dot drag start x and game object dot y equals game object dot input dot drag start y and that's uh, that's that's all there is for now we're going to do a little bit more in here when we're um, um, spacing our cards out when we're dropping them and also uh, um, if we want to have a card preview when upon hovering but right now this is basically all we need for the basic functionality uh, interactivity of our game i'll say once again we're not going to see any of any of this until probably about the next video when we get to see it all come together in action it'll be a glorious moment i promise uh, but for now let's just uh keep it there and we'll focus on this this line here the the um, working with socket io in the next video when everything starts to to come together i hope this video has been helpful for you if it has please be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel for more you can also follow me on Twitter, and I'd just love for you to check out my books and games at nightpathpub.com. Uh, thanks so much, and we'll see you soon.